Number three. I really love Craigslist. I'd estimate I've met maybe 300 people buying and selling stuff, and for the most part, everyone was nice and harmless. However, I did run into two creeps who made me rethink meeting strangers alone to sell stuff. FYI, I was an early 20s female at the time. So it's 2009, and I'm staying with my parents for the Christmas holidays in a small town in Florida. I'm going through my childhood room and cleaning out the closet, and I find a giant CD holder full of maybe 100 really shitty CDs. Think Nickelback, Aqua, and Chumbawamba. It's the 21st century. No one uses CDs anymore. I figure I'd try to sell the CDs on Craigslist. I put up a listing. 100 CDs from the late 90s and early to mid 2000s, mix of pop and rock, all for $35 or best offer. The next day, I get an email from a guy named John around 2 p.m. He says that he's in town temporarily and that he wants the CDs. He says he can pick them up after dinner around 8 p.m. I email him back my address and number and tell him to text or call when he's on his way. 8 p.m. comes and goes. I figure I've been stood up, which happens often on Craigslist. No big deal. My dad works for a liquor distribution company and would often do demonstration nights at restaurants and bars and would come home at bar closing time. This night, he gets home at around 3 a.m. I'm in college and I'm a total night owl, so I'm still up, probably eating junk food, surfing the web and watching horror flicks. I hear a car pull up, look out the window, and see him sitting in his car eating food. He often stops at Taco Bell on his way home and eats in the car so my mom doesn't know that he's cheating on his diet. Maybe 10 minutes later, my dad comes in and shouts my name. There is someone here to see you. Can you please tell me why a strange man is showing up at our house at 3 a.m.? Huh? I go downstairs and my dad says some guy pulled up in the driveway and asked for me by name. I walk outside with my dad, and this guy who is maybe mid-thirties gets out of his car. He says he's the Craigslist guy who wanted to buy my CDs. My dad goes back in the house, and I tell the guy it's really, really late to just be stopping by, especially without texting first. However, since I'm awake, I go and grab the CDs. He then proceeds to drone on and on about why he's buying the CDs. He says he's engaged to a woman he loves very much, and all he wants to do is make her happy. He said that last week, someone broke into her car and stole all of her CDs. She was really upset, and he wanted to make it up to her. He looked on Craigslist and found my listing and was really excited because I had a bunch of the CDs that she used to have. Weird thing is, I didn't list any of the artists or bands because I was lazy, but I didn't think about that at the time. Anyway... He said that he was getting it for her as a Christmas surprise. He said he was staying with his future in-laws somewhere nearby and that their family barbecue had run late, which is why he never made it at 8 p.m. By this point, I've lost interest and say something along the lines of, That's sweet. Next time, you should probably call or text the Craigslister instead of just showing up. I hand him the CDs, he hands me the cash, and I go back inside. Three days later, I start getting texts from an unknown number. Hey, I don't know my way around this town. Care to tour guide? I could really use a massage. Where can I get a massage in this town? You're Asian. Do you do massage? Would you take $40 for a one hour massage? Happy ending? I finally respond. Who the fuck is this? Oh, sorry. I bought the CDs from you the other day. Do you squirt? I didn't respond, obviously. I show my friends that night, and we laugh it off. Then the next day, I get more texts. I still have your address. I'm at the Bank of America near your neighborhood. I just got the 40, babe. Only three minutes away. Are you home? You fucking cunt. Stop ignoring me. I'm almost there. I immediately ran downstairs to tell my dad and mom. It was nighttime, so we shut off all the lights outside and inside my house. My mom, little brother, and I went in my parents' room in the back of the house. My dad hid behind the curtains of the front bay window with a shovel in his hand. A few minutes later, 
I heard him run down the hallway, fling the front door open, and run outside. We heard some faint shouting, so we all walked out of the bedroom. By that time, my dad came back in with his shovel, his face red and his hair all disheveled. Apparently, the guy came driving down our street really slowly. My dad recognized the car and went running outside with the shovel, yelling obscenities at the guy. The guy peeled off and never came back or texted me again. Number 2 Another time, I was moving from Florida to D.C. and was going to load up my car as much as I could with stuff. However, I lived on the third floor, plus a bit of a walk from my assigned parking spot, so I figured I could use some help. I posted an ad on Craigslist Gigs. I said I was looking for someone to help me load some heavy items like TVs, desks, etc. in my car. Less than an hour's worth of work, and I'd pay $45 or whatever. I give the very first responder my number and address, and he shows up. He was probably 5'8", and 350 pounds of pure fat. The sweat and smell coming off this guy in the Florida heat was pretty nauseating, but I didn't care as long as he did the job right. While he was carting heavy stuff, I was loading lighter things. Whenever I'd go upstairs to grab another load, he'd hurry after me so he could walk up the stairs behind me. I had the door propped open, so he didn't have to worry about me needing to unlock the door for him or anything. When he'd follow me up the stairs, he'd make these weird grunting noises like, Mm-hmm. But I assumed it was because he was out of shape. Eventually, everything's loaded properly. I pay him, and he drives off. I go back in my place to finish loading and cleaning. I go out maybe 45 minutes later to put another load in my car, and I see his truck is back parked across the street from mine. He's sitting in the driver's seat, looking at me. When he sees me notice him, he looks away. I walk over to his window and knock. He rolls it down, and I ask if he needs any help, or if he was lost. I was really confused as to why he had come back, and I knew he didn't live near me. He didn't say anything, just rolled his window back up and drove off. Um, okay, whatever. Of course, five minutes later, my phone starts blowing up. I don't recognize the number, so I don't answer the calls. Then texts start rolling in. I bet you taste salty and sweet. Who is this? Your pussy. What you up to tonight? I can come back over. I get this sinking feeling it's the Craigslist guy. He had never called me about the job when I gave him my number, so I didn't know what his number was. I like your pink panties. Then I realized he was looking at my dress when I was walking up the stairs. I immediately felt like a total idiot for wearing a dress that day. He then started dialing my number over and over again. I didn't know how to block the number through Sprint, so I had to just turn my phone off. Later, I was with my guy friend grabbing a bite and turned my phone back on. I got another text from the guy about how he wanted to toss me around like a rag doll and tie me up and make me beg for it. I showed the text to my friend and tell him the story. The Craigslist creep then proceeds to start blowing up my phone again, so my friend answers and says he's going to cut his dick off and feed it to his dog if he ever contacts me again. I moved the next day, so I never had to worry about him randomly showing up in his truck again. Since then, I've bought and sold stuff on Craigslist, but I always meet people at a public place. Number 1 This happened last year while I was broke and struggling to make ends meet. I had just moved out and didn't want to resort to going back to my parents. Anyway, I was so desperate I was looking on Craigslist for caregiver housekeeping type gigs just to make quick cash while I looked for a full-time position. After responding to several, I got a bite back from a man who had advertised as a disabled man who needed help with his morning and evening routines since he had a bad back. As a past caregiver, I thought nothing of his request to help with bathing and dressing since I knew it could be difficult for some. After chatting on the phone and coming to the conclusion that he was nice and normal, I proceeded to head over to his townhouse late one night to help with his nighttime routine. He lived a bit out of the way from me, but I was desperate and didn't mind. He even said I could spend the night since he'd need me in the morning anyway. Once I got there, 
He was a decent looking man in his late 30s or early 40s with a cane. He paid me $200 up front for the expected nighttime and morning routine the next day. He explained he was ex-military and had back surgery recently. Things started to get weird once he offered me some wine and commented on how cute I was. I should have seen that as a big red flag, but again, I was super poor and I didn't want to cheat him, so I gave him the benefit of the doubt. He then led me to his bedroom where he got undressed for his evening shower. I was horrified since I saw that he already had a giant erection and wanted me to lather him up. He asked if I wanted to take my clothes off and I declined and he responded respectfully. However, he did touch my butt when I bent over to pick something up for him. I should have ran out right then but I was waiting for the right moment. After quickly giving him the most unsexy shower in the most platonic way I could, he got out and said he was heading to bed but he didn't want to wear any clothes. The guest room, where I was to stay, was right next to his, and though I was tired I was still pretty on edge. My gut instinct was telling me to get the hell out of there. The issue was, we were in a three story townhouse, and we were on the top floor, and he had installed baby gates on each floor so his cat wouldn't run away. Also, he had turned off all the lights on the lower floor so it was pitch black. In order for me to get out, I'd have to pass his room. I quietly arranged my stuff in my purse while I heard his TV blaring, and to my horror, I saw him walk swiftly to his bathroom without his cane. I then realized that he was not as disabled as he had told me, since he had previously put on an act as if he couldn't walk without it. He also still had his heart on and was holding a giant bottle of lotion. As quickly and quietly as I could, I fled and ran like hell out of the room while he was in the bathroom and jumped like an Olympic sprinter over the cat gates down the dark stairs. As I threw the front door open to run to my car, I heard his house alarm go off. I got into my car as fast as lightning, heart beating like crazy. I immediately got phone calls from his number, and every car that trailed me had me terrified until I got out of there. After a two-hour drive, I was back to my place and grateful I was out of there. Who knows what could have happened if I had stayed overnight, but I didn't want to stay to find out.